Hello and welcome back. In section 3-4 we explore linear functions. So first what we mean by a linear function. We have to have the ability to get it to this form. So here m and b are constant. x and f of x are variables, of course. x is your independent variable. f of x, dependent variable. So one other thing that we would look at here M is generally used as slope. So the slope of a line, which is again represented by the letter M, vertical change. To horizontal change. So in other words it's measuring how steep of a line you're working with. Is your line this steep? Is it this steep? Is it almost vertical? How much vertical change is there for every unit of horizontal change? Vertical change, uh, if we use the other version of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. Uh, vertical change would be change in y, delta being the change in, divided by the change in x. And that ratio will be the same no matter what ordered pairs you pick out from a function. So for example, if we get uh, the function f of x is negative 3x plus 5, I might pick 1 and 4 to be my inputs. Go ahead and pause it, find f of 1 and f of 4. We'll come back, so negative 3 by 1 plus 5. So f of 1 is negative 3 plus 5. f of 1 is a positive 2. f of 4, negative 3 by 4 plus 5. So f of 4, negative 12 plus 5. So f of 4 is a negative 7. So then our slope m would be the change in y. Change in is a subtraction problem. If you changed from 12 years old to 16 years old, you aged four years. You're doing a difference, a subtraction. So our ordered pairs that we're working with, with uh, this example, we have 1, 2, and we have 4, negative 7. So remember, change in y over change in x. So our y values, we have a 2 and a negative 7. Our x values, I have a 1 and a 4. So our slope m, 2 plus 7 over negative 1 I'm sorry, positive 1 minus 4. So that is 9 over negative 3, so a slope of negative 3. What if I picked the negative 7 to go first? So notice I'm using these parentheses, uh, the reason being uh, I always have to have subtraction, but I also might have negative signs and 
included in the problem. And if I don't use these parentheses, I'm much more likely to have a sign error in the problem. So here's the negative seven, here's the two. Now, as long as I stay consistent, uh, I pick the negative seven to go first at the top. So the four has to go first at the bottom. Just like last time I picked the two to go first at the top, its partner, the one, had to go first at the bottom. So a four and a one. So our slope then, negative nine over positive three, we still get the same thing of m equals negative three. Now there's nothing special about that pair of ordered pairs. I could have picked a totally different pair of numbers for the same function. Let me go ahead and flip here. I could have just as easily, let me copy the function over, we had negative three x plus five. We could very easily have uh, just let you pick your own integer. Select two integers. Nine ordered pairs. So pick out two numbers for x, find out the f of x values, and then we'll take a look at the slope. Okay, so maybe someone used a zero. That's actually going to come in handy a little bit later on in this section. So f of zero, negative three by zero plus five, which is zero plus five. f of x is five, ordered pair b zero five. Uh, let's see. We used up a one and a four. I'm willing to bet someone chose a two. Uh, doesn't matter. You could have picked negative 9,000. We still would have gotten the same ratio out of it when we were done. F of 2, negative 3 by 2 plus 5. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So we have a 2 and a negative 1. And I'll just show one direction on these uh, since I've hopefully convinced you with the previous example that as long as you're consistent, you can choose either point to go first. So we'll do 5 minus negative 1 and 0 minus 2. So then m is equal to 5 minus a negative 1 turns into plus 1 and downstairs 0 minus 2 so m is 6 over negative 2 m equals a negative 3 still. So we still get the same value out of it. Now you might have noticed the negative 3 appears in the problem right where we put the m when we're describing what the general functions look like. That is not a coincidence. That is the value you should get for a slope if you're in function notation. Uh, also, you might notice that the five appeared in the problem as well. If our input is zero, no matter what we multiply zero by, we'll get zero. Zero plus the number on the end here is always the number on the end here. So some couple properties of f of x is mx plus b. Slope is m. y-intercept is 0 comma b. Now what we mean by the y-intercept is just that's where we're touching the y-axis. Uh, I won't do a quick, uh, I won't do a very detailed graph here with the stamp and everything. I'll just do a quick rough sketch. Any of these points that are on the y-axis are considered y-intercepts. Uh, so this one happened to be a 0, 5. 0 for the x, 5 for the y. A point down here, 0 for the x, negative 2 for the y. Uh, 0, negative 4, uh, 0, and 1. Every single y-intercept is always going to be 0, comma, something. It's 
Similarly, x-intercepts are going to be something comma zero. So whichever one you have an intercept on, the other variable is worth zero. And that's true of any equation. That's not just true of linear functions. All right, so let's play with uh, one, this time not written in function notation. Let's look at y is negative 8x plus 24. Find all intercepts. So if I'm asked to find the x-intercept, automatically I know, even though they're not going to write it down for me, y must be a 0. So 0 is equal to negative 8 times x plus 24. And then we're just solving linear equations again. Uh, so we're subtracting 24 on both sides. So negative 24 is negative 8x, and we'll multiply both sides by negative 1 eighth. So 3 is equal to x. So 3 comma 0, careful with your order there, x first, then y. That's our x-intercept. Y-intercept, they'll ask me for that, but in my little thought bubble here, automatically I think x equals 0. Again, they're not going to write that part down for you. So then that is y is negative 8 times 0 plus 24. 0 times anything is 0. So 0, 24 is our y-intercept for that particular linear function. And hopefully you remember, if you were asked for the slope, since we're in a notation that could be easily translated into function notation, m is negative 8. You could easily get that using change in y over change in x in those two ordered pairs. So one other thing they ask us to do with lines is actually write our own lines given some properties. But let's go back to this idea that slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. And let's solve for change in y. Well, if I want to clear the fractions, I'll multiply both sides by change in x. Change in x divided by change in x is 1 as long as change in x is non-zero. So now the change in y is the slope times the change in x. So in other words, this subtraction problem is the slope times another subtraction problem. So in general, we'll have y minus something is the slope times x minus something. So this is the basic setup for the point-slope form if they want the equation of a line. All right, so we'll start with write the, writing the equation of a line in function notation. So function notation for a line with slope of negative 6 and point negative 3, 4. So we already have the slope. If we don't have the slope, we have to do that before we do anything else. But we already have the slope. We know m equals negative 6. We do have an ordered pair, a negative 3, 4. Those are the two things you need to write the equation of a line, a point and a slope. Unless it's a vertical line, uh, we'll get to what happens with vertical lines later, but basically it's 
an undefined slope, so we still would know something about the slope. So then we know change in y is slope times change in x. So it's always going to be that same initial setup. y minus something is slope number times x minus something. So then it's just plugging and chugging after that. So our y value was 4, our slope was a negative 6, our x value was a negative 3. So then we do a little cleanup. So y minus 4 on the left side, negative 6 by the quantity x plus 3. So minus a negative 3 turns into plus 3. So y minus 4 is distributed property negative 6x minus 18. And we'll just finish it off adding 4 to both sides and then return to function notation. So y is negative 6x uh, minus 14. And to go to function notation, then we can just replace y with f of x or g of x or h of x. Negative 6x minus 14. So that's our function notation. Uh, the next thing we look at is, well, what happens if they don't just spoon feed us the slope? Uh, so we'll look at having negative 2, negative 16, and negative 5, negative 37 as points. Same directions, we want the function notation. So this time, I don't have the slope. If you don't have the slope, you need to find that before you do any other work. Slope, always change in the y, change in the vertical, over change in x, change in the horizontal. So our slope m, negative 16 plus 37 over negative 2 plus 5. So our slope m will be positive 21 over positive 3, which is a positive 7. So we have the slope m, we have the point, and we can use either ordered pair. They will both give you the exact same answer. Uh, in fact, let me just flip to the next page and I'll show you both of them the first time. And just know that after that, um, you don't have to go through it both times. If one point looks easier to work with than the other, use the easy guy. So we have negative 2, negative 16. Let me just go ahead and sketch this down. And we had a negative 5, negative 37. And we came up with m equals 7. So now we're using the idea that the change in y is the slope times the change in x. So just the slope formula rearranged to get the change in y by itself. So y minus, I'll look at it using this one first, the negative 16 is equal to our slope 7 times x minus the x that goes with the negative 16 was the negative 2. So y plus 16 is 7 times the quantity x plus 2. So y plus 16 is 7x plus 14. So distributive property happening there. So y plus 16 minus 16 is 7x plus 14 minus 16. So y is 7x minus 2. So we'll name this guy g of x, I guess. We already used f of x a minute ago. So now for that what if question, what if I used negative 5, negative 37, what would my function look like? So y value negative 37, slope is still 7, x value that corresponds to negative 37 is the negative 5. Again, we do the cleanup. So y plus 37 is 7 times the quantity x plus 5. So y plus 37 is 7x plus 35. And then we're just subtracting 37 on both sides. So 
So then y is 7x minus 2. That looks awfully familiar. g of x is 7x minus 2. So you can use either ordered pair. Just make sure you use both points from the same ordered pair. We can't use the x from one and the y from the other. Other than that, it doesn't matter which ordered pair you use. Don't go through it twice. Pick whichever one looks easier to you and use that one. Okay, so I'm going to have you uh, repeat that. Uh, this time, uh, what did I pick? So same instructions. This time, negative 1, positive 23, and 5, negative 13. So go ahead and find your slope and find the uh, function version of that equation. Okay, welcome back. So one subtraction problem over another. So our y values, we had a 23 and a negative 13. x values, we had a negative 1 and a positive 5. So top turns into 23 plus 13. Bottom turns into negative 1 minus 5. So our slope m would be 36 over negative 6. So m equals negative 6. So then change in y is slope times change in x. I'll go through it with the negative 1, 23. I'll ask you to also run through it with the 5, negative 13 and confirm that we get the same function when we're done. So an x value of 23 slope of negative 6, oh, y value 23, x value of negative 1. So y minus 23, change in y is slope negative 6 times change in x, turns into x plus 1. So y minus 23 is negative 6, x minus 6, so just distributive property there. And we'll go ahead and add 23 to both sides. So y is negative 6x. And then that would give us a plus 17. So then we have to remember to give it a name if they wanted it in function notation. Uh, we used f and g. We'll use h for this guy. Negative 6x plus 17. So that should be our function for this one. Now the only other uh, version of the equation of a line that uh, we tend to work with is what's called standard form. A times x plus b times y equals c, a, b, and C are numbers. A and B not both zero. One of them at a time is allowed to be zero. They can't be zero at the same time. So basically, you get all your variables on the one side, your constant on the other side. Uh, generally, they also want you to get rid of fractions. So they want integers. Oh, you're used to seeing i for integers. Uh, z is the uh, usual notation for integers. All right, uh, so we'll look at uh, 1, negative 2, and negative 5, 22 in standard form. So I don't have the slope yet, so I fix that before I do anything else. In fact, if you want, go ahead and pause it and find the slope. Welcome back. Uh, so negative 2 and 22 are the y values. Or corresponding x values would be a 1 and a negative 5. So our slope m, negative 2 minus 22. Downstairs, 1 plus 5. So our slope m, negative 24, 6. So our slope is a negative 4. Uh, I'm guessing most of you, if you are writing the equation of the line want to use the 
1, negative 2 instead of the negative 5, 22. That's the way I would do it as well. Mathematically, they're the same. Uh, one just is a little bit less work. So our y value negative 2, our slope known to be a negative 4, and our x value a 1. So then we have a y plus 2 is negative 4x uh, plus 4. Like before, I'll move the 2. So then y is negative 4x plus 2. The only thing that is different instead of going to f of x equals at this stage, I want the x on the same side as the y, so I'll add 4x to both sides. So 4x plus y is worth 2. That would be the standard form. So the only difference is instead of f of x equals, if they want function notation, move the x variable instead. Otherwise, all the other stuff that you do is the same. So that should give you enough to do your three, four exercises from the back of the chapter. As always, if you have questions, please let me know. Stay safe out there.